All right, welcome to chapter 2.3, where we're going to talk about chemical properties and how they're different from physical properties. So just like how matter has physical properties that help define it and what it is, matter also has chemical properties that define how it can change and interact with the matter around it. A chemical property is the, any ability to produce a change in the composition of matter. So chemical cr properties can be observed only when the substances in a sample of matter are changing into different substances. So if we look at this picture here of these candles, you can see that the candles are floating in water and that tells us something about their physical properties. It tells us that the candles are less dense than water, just like we saw with the Diet Coke. So they float to the top. We can also make some other observations about the physical properties of these candles. We can say that they are in a solid state. They are kind of a pinkish color on the outside and a whitish color on the inside. We might be able to smell them if we were in the same room with them and that would be a physical property. But it turns out there is a chemical property going on here. And it turns out that chemical property is happening as the candles burn. When the candles burn, the wax itself actually changes from wax into a different substance. And that's why the burning of the candles is a chemical change. So an example of a chemical property is flammability, just like we saw with the candles. Flammability is a material's ability to burn in the presence of oxygen. Now, flammability is a chemical property because in order for a substance to burn, it has to change its composition. It turns out that there is a chemical equation for any object or um, substance that burns. And it is whatever that substance is made out of has to combine with oxygen. And after that combination happens, you always get water and carbon dioxide left over as um, the results of that reaction. So if you look down here at this picture of wood burning, wood is mostly made of carbon and hydrogen. And when it reacts with oxygen in the presence of extreme heat, it will burn. And that oxygen will react with the carbon and the hydrogen in the wood to produce some water and some CO2. And because it's changed from wood and oxygen to water and carbon dioxide, we know that it's a chemical change. It has actually changed substances. Another example of a chemical property is reactivity. And reactivity is pretty general, but it describes how readily a substance combines with other substances. And a good example of this is rust. Certain metals like iron are very reactive with oxygen and will chemically combine with it to form rust. So as you can see in this picture of the car down here, this car, is mostly made of iron, and that iron reacted with the oxygen in the air over time, turning it into iron rust, which is iron oxide. Now, certain metals will react with oxygen better, and this is, depends on their reactivity. A non-example of reactivity is the element argon. Argon is called an inert gas because its reactivity is so low that scientists say it doesn't react with anything. It turns out that argon is used in light bulbs and that's because as the electricity passes through the little wire in the light bulb and it gets hot, it will not burn because argon will not react with it like oxygen would. If there was oxygen in that light bulb, it would react with that extreme heat and with that metal and it would burn right up just like the wood did in the previous picture but because argon is in there, it has a very ro low reactivity and that little wire can produce a whole lot of heat and a whole lot of light for a long time before it burns up. Now, sometimes chemical changes are hard to distinguish from physical changes, but there are three common types of evidence for a chemical reaction. And these are a change in color, the production of a gas, and the formation of a precipitate which is a solid that comes out of any kind of liquid mixture. There's also the transfer of heat, but that gets a little complicated, so we're going to leave that for uh, the discussion of another time. An example of a change in color as a chemical change is copper. Copper reacts with oxygen just like iron does to rust or tarnish. And it turns out that copper, normally this really nice shiny reddish orange color, 
will tarnish to a grayish green over time. And that change in color from the red to the dull green tells us that the copper has reacted with the oxygen in the air and formed a new substance, carbon and oxygen chemically combined. The production of a gas is one that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And um, an example is the baking soda and vinegar volcano. As you add baking soda and vinegar together, you get these crazy bubbles that come up. And those bubbles are happening because the reaction between the vinegar and the baking soda is producing a gas. I believe it's carbon dioxide. So it's producing all this carbon dioxide, forming all of these bubbles. And that's because there is a chemical change going on and those two things are interacting with each other on a molecular level. And the formation of a precipitate. So like I said before, a precipitate is any solid that forms and separates from a liquid mixture. So some of you may eat this, some of you may not, but this is an example of a precipitate. It's cottage cheese. And it turns out cottage cheese is made by taking milk, which has all these proteins in it, and adding an acid like vinegar or lemon juice. When you add that acid to the proteins in the milk, the proteins actually chemically change and clump together, forming these little chunks. And these little pieces um, are solid within the milk. They are what we call a precipitate. So cottage cheese is an example of a precipitate or a solid forming from a chemical reaction between two or more liquids being mixed together. Now, a good way to know if it's chemical or physical change is to understand the basic definition of each. So this is really important. When matter undergoes a chemical change, the composition of the matter changes. When matter undergoes a physical change, the composition of the matter stays the same. So, I have two examples here. The first one is a pencil being sharpened. Now, when you sharpen a pencil, you make it a little bit skinnier, you might make it pointier, you make it smaller, but fundamentally, that pencil is still made of the same substances. The tip is still made of graphite, and the surrounding pencil is made out of wood, maybe with some paint on it. But none of those substances have actually chemically changed. They're exactly the same. So this is what we would call a physical change. On the other hand, if you have a pencil and you light it on fire, yeah, that pencil is going to change color and it's going to give off some heat and it's going to get smaller like it did when you sharpened it. But on a basic level, the molecules in that pencil are changing from one thing to another. The carbon within the wood of that pencil is actually changing to combine with the oxygen in the air and create carbon dioxide. It is changing fundamentally what it is made up of. So this would be an example of a chemical change. And we'll do a lot more examples of the differences between physical and chemical changes over the next week.